Hello, my name is Michael Clifford, and I'm a data scientist and member of the Operate First project here in Red Hat's office of the CTO. Today, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Jupyter Hub and show you how to get up and running with both a classic Jupyter Notebook and a Jupyter Lab instance in no time. With that, you'll no longer need to worry about your laptop's memory or other resource limitations when working on an analytics project. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to our website at operate-first.cloud. Here you can select users and navigate to our dashboard. Once on the dashboard, you'll find links to all the applications that are currently enabled on our cluster. Now go ahead and click launch on the JupyterHub application, which for first time users should take you directly to the login page. Be sure to select MOC SSO which is short for Mass Open Cloud Single Sign-On to access the cluster. You'll then be redirected to the MOC login page. And if, you're already, uh, if you already have a Google account, there's no need for additional sign-up. Just go ahead and select Google to sign in. Then you'll be brought to the Jupyter Hub Spawner page where you can customize the type of Jupyter instance that you'd like to use. This page allows you to choose the image that you'd like to deploy. So depending on what, uh, what you select here, you'll get an environment with some packages and dependencies that are already pre-installed, uh, things like TensorFlow or Spark. For now, uh, we're just gonna assume some basic data science needs um, and something like scikit-learn. So let's go ahead and select the image labeled S2i SciPy Notebook, uh, which we happen to know comes with the package, uh, that package pre-installed. Um, in addition to defining your working environment, there are also uh, options for memory and CPU sizes uh, that can be set to, to small, medium, or large. Uh, you can also request a number of GPUs uh, in, in the case that there are any available um, in the environment. Finally, you have the option to set some environment variables here. And uh, environment variables can be used to pass specific information, such as API credentials, directly into your Jupyter environment. Uh, so this allows you to share notebooks and use Git without exposing any credentials. So for example, if your notebook reads data from object storage, you likely don't want to have to uh, explicitly put those uh, access keys and secrets directly into your notebook. So let's add something here uh, into the first AWS variable will type something and something to in the second one. And now let's create a new variable. Uh, we'll call it my API password um, and use the value key. Once you've selected the options that are right for you, go ahead and click start. So starting the instance may take a few seconds up to a minute. But while it's loading, you can examine the event logs to see what's going on. One thing to note here is that the Jupyter server is connecting to a storage volume, which is like your local hard drive, where your notebooks and other files are stored. So as long as you, uh, so as you log on and off or shut down your server completely, your work persists. Uh, even if you start a different notebook image later on, uh, it's really like your own laptop's drive. So when you launch your Jupyter environment for the first time, it will be empty. Uh, however, this is my, my instance here, uh, and it's connected to the storage volume associated with my account. And so it shows the three projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, this page does provide a nice user-friendly uh, UI to navigate the notebooks or, or other files that you have in remote storage. Um, now, assuming your directory is completely empty, let's go ahead and create a new notebook. Uh, we can cl click New in the upper right-hand corner, then select Python 3 from the notebook section. This will spawn a brand new, empty, and untitled notebook for us. Let's uh, make sure that the environment variables we defined before starting our notebook server actually made it into the environment. We can do this by importing the OS module, then calling os.getenv um, on my API key. Great, so we can see that it returned the correct value. And as I'd said earlier, this image also comes pre-installed with a number of packages that we'll want to use for our project. 
So let's go ahead and confirm that that's the case and import sklearn. I'll do that by uh, importing sklearn and running the cell. Great, so the fact that it ran without error means that the package is in fact installed and we're ready to go. Now uh, we can start developing. With notebooks, uh, we can toggle cells as either markdown or uh, markdown for annotating our work. We can display plots, graphs, or images, and we can write and run Python code as we normally would. So if you follow along with me up until now, congratulations, you've got your very own cloud-based data science working environment. Now let's go ahead and rename and save the notebook before shutting it down. Uh, let's go ahead and call this SciPy. And once the notebook is closed, we can see that it's actually still running on the server based on the screen icon uh, next to the file name. So by going to the running tab, we can actually go ahead and, and shut it down completely. Um, so th this was the classic notebook environment that you're probably used to. Um, we can also use Jupyter Lab environment with its enhanced UI and larger uh, selection of extensions. So let's stop this server and start another image. To do that, we can go to our console dashboard and click stop my server. Uh, this should bring us back to the spawner page where we can select a different image. Uh, this lets us select, uh, or this, excuse me, this time around, let's go ahead and select S2I, Elira Lab version 6, and click Start. Uh, once this new image loads, it will open on the launcher page where we can select a few different file types to start with. There's a Python notebook, a Python console, or even a terminal to access our environment directly from the command line. Let's go ahead and select terminal and then list the contents of the working directory to see what's there. Great, uh, we can see that the SciPy notebook that we created in our previous session is still here. We might also be curious to know how much disk space uh, we have available to us. Uh, to do that, we can use the df command to show us how much disk space we have available. We can also use the UI on the right to navigate our files. So let's open the notebook we created earlier. If we rerun the cell, uh, if we rerun run the cell, uh, you can see that we still have our environment variables available to us since we did not change them at all on the spawner page. Jupyter Lab is great. Um, it retains all the benefits of the classic notebook, but with a little bit more uh, flexible and feature rich UI. Uh, as well as a whole host of additional extensions to make life easier for data science development. We'll dig a little bit deeper into the benefits of Jupyter Lab in an upcoming video and show you how you can use some new extensions to manage your dependencies more effectively. When you're ready to sign off, it's best practice to navigate to the uh, file and find hub control panel at the bottom of the dropdown. This will stop your server and free up the cluster resources for others to use. But like I've mentioned throughout, all your data and work will still remain uh, right where it is, ready for you to come back later. And with that, you now know how to get up and running with your very own Jupyter Hub environment on the Operate First Cloud. So go ahead, start another instance and have fun.